welcome. There are no items for the Zoning Board of Adjustments. So we're moving on to uh, the Rapid City Planning Commission meeting on, April, on August 27th, 2015. Some housekeeping items. If any member of the audience wishes to speak to an item on the agenda, there are speaker to request forms on the right, on the table along the left wall. Please fill out the request with the agenda number of uh, the item you wish to speak and hand it to the staff seated at the left of the dais. Cell phones and electronic devices. At this time, we would ask that if any member of the audience has a cell phone or other electronic device that you either turn it off or turn the ringer to silent. If you need to take a call, please step up into the hallway so the meeting will not be disrupted. The consent calendars. One through eight have been placed on the consent calendar and may be approved as a group. Action taken on consent items are in accordance with staff recommendation by a single vote. Any item may be removed from the consent calendar by a planning commissioner, staff member, or audience member for separate consideration at this time. The findings of the Planning Commission are recommendations to City Council. City Council will make the final decision with the exception of the following item. Item 2, 15 UR 017. Planning Commission actions on these items are final unless the party appeals the decision to the City Council. All appeals must be submitted in writing to the Planning and Development Services Department by the close of the seventh full calendar day following action by the Planning Commission. Are there any items one through seven that staff need removed? Any items Planning Commissioners need removed? Mm -hmm. And number two, so items two and three. So I would entertain a motion. Move to approve with exception of items number two and three. Motions, is there a second? Second. Motion has been made to approve items on the consent calendar one through eight with exceptions of item two and three. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Item number two. Madam Chair, I need to abstain from this item with a relationship with the uh, agent. I will be as well. Okay. okay Move to approve. Is there a second? Karen. Okay. Motion's been made and, and seconded to approve item 15 UR 017. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passed. Item three. Madam Chair, uh, if I might, um, there is a priority action plan listed on this with staff report. I guess Patsy's here this morning. Um, could you run through those priority items and tell us uh, why we have a quarterly report this morning? Based on our comp plan, we've identified that every quarter you should get an update so that you kind of know what's going on. Associated with that, there is a list of action items that the city is supposed to take on. There are immediate actions, which are um, you know within a year or so. There are near-term actions. Those are within the next two years. And then there are long-term actions, and those are three to five years out. So what I've done with this priority action plan, I've taken it directly from our comp plan. And it has on the very right-hand column a column that says status as of uh, August 2015. And it identifies everything that we have done based on the comp plan, whether we've initiated it, whether it's in progress, whether we've completed it, whether um, uh, it's ongoing, those different kinds of things. And it, the priority action plan is 31 pages. I would be happy to go through every one of those <laughs> if you would like. No, I didn't realize that we were getting quarterly reports when I saw that on there. When I saw the uh, MPO on there, that would have the um, funding for the, or the, the, the streets and construction projects that are in that report? The, the MPO, it, um, that just identifies where the transportation planning funds are. With the MPO, we do 
um, the long range plan, we coordinate with the member agencies, which is Box Elder, Pennington County, Meade County, Rapid City, uh, Piedmont, Somerset, portions of Meade, portions of Pennington. Um, that's really the planning organization to, to direct where our transportation needs are. It's not a construction project other than the transportation improvement program. And on the near-term uh, projects, the two-year plan? Mm -hmm. Are those all handled in the development, planning development? We, within that um, priority action plan, there's also a lead agency identified. So some of those, yes, are the uh, community planning and development services department, some are public works, some are outside agencies. Um, if you'll also look at the accomplishments plan, those are specific goals that have been um, specifically referenced on what we're doing with those. I think the big thing to note is that we have initiated the downtown master plan. And just so you know, you should be getting an invitation from Sarah shortly. Our consultant should be here in September. We'll be having some group meetings and we'd like for all of you to participate in the direction of that downtown plan. That's sort of a major topic from our department. And one other thing, you'll also be seeing the long range transportation plan. It's our next five year cycle of our um, transportation vision. That should be coming forward within the next couple months. Thank you. I would entertain a motion for item number three. Move approved. Steve made the motion as our okay. second. <coughs> All those in favor of item number 15 CA 001, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. We will now go to the regular agenda items. Item number nine. Item number nine is 15 PD001. Uh, this was continued from the uh, last planning commission meeting uh, to allow the applicant to address some uh, drainage issues and questions that the planning commission had. Uh, staff did meet with the applicant, the neighbor, and the applicant's engineer out at the uh, site on August 12th, and uh, the plan was to regrade between the uh, structures as well as put a drain pipe in the backyard. Uh, went out on... Tuesday and it didn't look like the work had been completed. I got some pictures of what had been done at this time. So they've torn up the sod and they're getting ready to regrade that drainage between the houses. And then uh, the idea was to put a drain pipe in the uh, backyard leading to the uh, street on the north side and that hadn't been uh, started yet. And so staff's recommendation is that this item be continued to the September 10th Planning Commission meeting. The applicant's engineer is here uh, t with an update and maybe some to answer some questions for you at this time. Uh, Kyle? Kale? Sorry. No, that's all right. That's a tough name. To... Yeah, my name is Kale Macnabo. I own Spurlick Consulting of 821 Columbus Street. I represent uh, Chad's Answer Construction in this item. I apologize for not attending the last planning commission meeting. I was out of town. Um, I did listen to the, uh, the audio on it, and I'd like to, you know, just answer and alleviate some of your concerns and questions that you have, uh, and provide an update as the status of the project right now. Um, what we see, and, and uh, like Mr. Fletcher had indicated, we met with him and uh, Ted from Public Works on the site, as well as the the homeowner, the affected homeowners, and uh, Chad, and and we essentially walked the site, looked at the uh, you know, the, the drainage easement as it stood before this last round of stripping the topsoil or the sod off and trying to regrade the channel. And what we saw was uh, there were pockets where water had been sitting in it and it's, it's irrigation water, essentially. Um, can we pull up the, the overhead again? I guess I'd like to give you a brief synopsis of where the water's coming from on this site. It, and it starts essentially at the back of the house. Actually, can we do this one? Can I draw the screen on this one? 
So what we see is the top of the Oh, there we go. What we see is the, that's essentially the top of the basin. The water that's in the backyard doesn't make it down this swale. It's actually going this way through their backyard. Um, so the rainwater that enters this swale is just whatever falls in, you know, between the houses. You know, the intention being to regrade this swale. We'd initially come in and graded a, what was more of a trapezoidal swale, which looks like that. Um, yeah, it had some problems with the bottom slope. It was holding water. What we decided was instead of you know, constructing a trapezoid was to come in and make it more of a semicircle, starting at the rock on this side and the rock on this side. And that's essentially what was discussed when we met with the owner here and uh, Chad Zanster. So you can see from this photograph, and that's a photograph taken yesterday, that uh, the tops are the sods that strip back off the site. The channel's being formed. I don't believe the sod's back on at this point, is it, Chad? No, the, sand, the sod has not been uh, replaced as of this point. Um, the other issue that Fletcher uh, talked about was All right, it's been a while since I got to draw at the dais, so hope you'll indulge me. We talked about installing drains into the backyard of the applicant, and, and this is essentially the a picture last night of the pipe that's been installed and the area drains installed at this point. What you see is <coughs> this is an area drain in their backyard. Um, the, uh, I, I can't remember your husband's name, Chad. Chad. Chad picked the location for that area drain as the lowest spot in his backyard and the spot that he thought it was going to be most useful. And Mr. Zanster has then installed this pipe, which is going to divert the water that pools in the backyard. It will enter those inlets and get diverted out to the street. Um, all of that work has not been completed. It's not 100% complete at this point. What we're going to do is install what's called a sidewalk bridge out on the road section and we'll cut the top of the curb off so that this metal channel, metal and concrete channel, can, uh, the pipe will come into the back of this channel, it'll flow under the sidewalk and out into the gutter line of the street. That's essentially the update on where we're at as of right now. Um, are there any questions you'd like me to cover or I can uh, feel for you? I don't see any questions. All right, thank you. Sherry. Jerry. And if you would say your name and address, please. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sherry Dieterle. Um, I guess this morning I just wanted to um, once again reiterate my concerns about um, what's been happening to our property. Um, you know, the, the occurred damage, um, which has been occurring to our foundation over the past several months um, since the adjacent home was built and to our crawl space, um, we've had to endure our yard being torn up twice now in two separate places. Um, the reduction of our property value and the resale value, as I stated before, we had a neighbor that purchased another home out in the area and, and stated that they did not build the, buy the home next to us because they felt that it was too close to our property. Um, and I feel that that has reduced my value in my home um, when we try to resell it. And of course, all the time I've had to spend trying to correct this issue. Um, I feel that um, the builder should have been more mindful of the lot lines. You know, we were, at the time that they were digging the property, we noticed that it was obviously too close to our property. Um, my family, you know, has been 
trying to get you know this issue corrected for months now and it's obviously taken quite a while um, along with many other issues that have been happening with our home that you know should be taken care of um, you know we also have had several neighbors be in contact with the builder regarding issues with our homes and we've received little action I have been in my home for two years now and I'm still trying to get things corrected um, I guess the end matter is to consider that our family has been the victim of this mistake. We were the ones that have to endure the damage to our property and the loss of value. Um, we have had to spend um, several hundred dollars to install a privacy fence between the two homes out on our patio. And I feel that the water damage is going to have long-term damage to our foundation and our home. And I hope that you consider our family's sacrifices and losses when making your decision. Thank you for the time. Thank you. I'd entertain a motion now so we can just. Yeah. Move to postpone per staff recommendation. Is there a second, Karen? No, Will. Any <coughs> questions? Planning? I mean, Madam Chair, if we could, if that motion could be to continue to your September 10th Planning Commission meeting to allow the work to be completed and staff to inspect the site. And the seconder agrees to, okay. Andy? So with the continuation, are we waiting to see if the grading works? Is that, is, is that the reason for the continuation? I mean. What if it doesn't rain between now and September 10th? I mean, I, I'm asking what are we accomplishing by, by uh, delaying it? Well, I think number one, we want to go out and take a look at it and see what it looks like and have our engineers uh, review the work to determine whether or not that it appears that the design will function. And it very well could be that at your next meeting um, that, that there will be another continuation if there is some doubt or concern. but. Looking at the forecast, I think we're going to get some rain, so we should be okay on that one. So is the so is the general feeling that if the grading solution works and the drainage solution works, that it, this is okay with staff? Again, the item before you is to reduce a setback, and right. that's the only reason it's before you. Otherwise, and Carla, correct me if I'm wrong, this may be just a civil matter between a builder and a property owner. Okay. But because there is a setback issue, when we bring these recommendations forth, we want to make sure that there's no conflict with utilities or drainage as a result of the encroachment. Okay, thanks, Vicki. John. Thank you, and that answered my question, Madam Chair. Yes. <coughs> okay, uh, the motion's been made to move item 15 PD 001 to the September 10th meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Item number 10. Madam Chair, I believe we are on item number 10. Yes. I would like to apologize that there's a revised staff report on the dais that says nine and it should read 10. Item number 10 is a preliminary subdivision plan to create 17 commercial lots. These are located east of Elkvale Road and south of Minnesota Street, and it's known as the Marlin Drive Commercial Park. And with that, I'd like to show you some slides. I'd like to also note that the reason that this is on non-consent originally was because Commissioner uh, Braun abstains from this as his, uh, this is done by Dream Design. And in the meantime, um, Kyle from Dream Design uh, reviewed the staff report and has offered up some revisions. We met as staff and concurred that there could be some clarity to some of the language and hence the revised staff report that you see on the dais before you today. This is a vicinity map showing uh, Elkville Road and Minnesota Street and Ariel. They're out there currently working on Marlin Drive. And the first stipulation that I've requested that you revise is stipulation number three. 
there were previously approved construction plans and the original stipulation said that upon development engineering plan bring in construction plans and show the dedicated right of way. Those plans have been approved, they're out there building. Um, I was out the other day, it's, it looks really good out there. And so we've revised the stipulation just to put them on notice that when they do bring in the plat document to uh, show the right of way, but the plans have been approved. This shows the future land use plan for the area. You can see the red is a mixed use commercial and the purple is an employment area. Major street plan shows Marlin Drive as a collector street and the approved plans identify that it is being built accordingly. Minnesota Street and Elkville Road are both arterial roads, Elkville being a principal, Minnesota being an ar uh, a minor arterial. And we did get a traffic impact study with an earlier phase of Elks Crossing. Uh, this development does not trigger any additional improvements at this time. I would like to put you on notice though that it is anticipated that when warrants are met, there will be a signal set at Elkville Road in Minnesota Street intersection, as well as Marlin Drive and Minnesota Street intersection. If you, any of you have been out there and you're trying to uh, come out of this development onto Elkville Road, uh, you do have to sit a little bit, but it is not too difficult to get out. And I've, I've been out there different times of the day and. Uh, again, it's, it's not too difficult at this time, but as we see the development continuing, we anticipate there will need to be a signal in the future. The current zoning of the property, it's kind of a mix. There's a bunch that's general ag that's being held as, as a holding zone. Um, the upper northern corner is currently general commercial, and the light purple is shown as uh, office commercial. That portion is within a planned development. As they bring forward their development plans, they'll have to rezone according to the future land use plan and obtain a final plan development for the area in the designation prior to issuance of a building permit. The layout of the lots, showing uh, that this is a phased project and uh, you can see that this is kind of right in the middle of, of this area as to what they're proposing for their commercial development. Looking south on Marlin Drive, looking southeast into the site, looking southwest, east on Minnesota Street, west on Minnesota Street, and somewhat southwest on Elkville Road. <coughs> Bringing to your attention the other revised stipulations, I'll jump down to number 14. Th there was some clarity requested to indicate that they need to bring in maintenance and ownership documentation for only the privately owned drainage areas, uh, not that that would be regional and, and put into a, a city major drainage easement. The issue that uh, triggered the most discussion was stipulation number seven. We requested that as a part of the construction plans that they bring in uh, a plans and analysis demonstrating that there's capacity to accommodate the sewer from this this um, phase of, of the development. The property that we're talking about is right in this area. Currently with the plans that have been submitted, the sewer would connect to existing sewer in Minnesota Street and traverse through the existing development to a Jolly Lane lift station uh, and then it would extend out to our wastewater plant. The city has a project in the future that will show that a gravity line would be installed from that lift station to the plant and at such time that lift station would not be needed but that project is ongoing and has not been completed at this time. Based on previous information submitted on previous phases uh, of this development, it's been brought to our attention that when the city approved the last plat in this area, there was some concern with using that same route that the pipes between here and here were about at capacity. It's been anticipated that in order to uh, accommodate the sewer from this area, it needs to come down Minnesota Street, up Jolly Lane, and, and then on uh, into the, the lift station at this time and then in the future just through those gravity sewer lines. Uh, what we've recommended is that as a part of this, 
the, that the sewer plans that are brought in as a part of the, the next phase of the platting demonstrate whether or not this is the trigger that the sewer has to be connected down Minnesota Street and then north on Jolly Lane. We don't know that yet. We'll know more when those plans come in. Uh, we had previously indicated that they needed to analyze the, the main capacity as well as the lift station. We've removed the lift station from that analysis and just put it to the main capacity. So with that, we are recommending that this item be approved with the stipulations as identified. I know you got the planner version on all of that, and thankfully Ted's here in case you have more detailed questions. Kyle is in the audience, and if you've got any questions for him as well. Move to approve the stipulations. Is there a second? Eric? As Vicki noted, I'll have to abstain from this item. Motion's been made to approve item number 15, PL065. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Item number 11 is uh, 15 PD 023, a major amendment to the plan development to allow a light emitting diode or LED message center as an accessory use to the existing golf course. This is for the Elks Country uh, or Elks Club golf course located uh, at 3333 Jolly Lane, uh, about 2,500 feet south of Jolly Lane and South Dakota Highway 44. Um, the applicant is proposing one single-sided 36.62 inch by 80.69 inch long uh, LED sign to be located on uh, the existing monument sign on the property. Uh, the reason this is coming before you uh, is the Planning Commission has previously asked staff to bring forward any uh, LED or light emitting diode signs for their consideration. Uh, let me take you to some slides. Uh, vicinity map of Elks Country, uh, 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 the Elks Club golf course, uh, aerial view. Um, I should point out that the location of the sign is actually just here on Jolly Lane uh, on that uh, corner or portion of the golf course. Uh, future land use shows this is a, a parks and green space with uh, some low density neighborhood uh, located to the north and to the uh, east. Uh, major street plan, you can see Elkvale Road there, Principal Arterial Street. Jolly Lane is indicated as a collector street on the major street plan. Zoning of the property is General Agriculture District. Some of the residential development to the south of the proposed sign is uh, Low Density Residential District. Uh, documents showing the location of the proposed sign in relationship to the, um, uh, the rest of the golf course and the residential development to the south. Uh, we should point out that no new structures are being requested as a part of this uh, proposed sign. Uh, the sign will be located on existing sign, um, an existing monument sign on the property. Uh, um, drawing of what the proposed sign will look like and the dimensions of the location on the, as I said, the existing signage. View of the sign posted on the property in front of where the sign is proposed to go, the LED sign. Uh, Jolly Lane looking to the south. Jolly Lane looking to the north. One thing we should point out here is that um, when staff reviewed the property and visited the site, it does appear that that uh, marquee message center there on the left side of the road, as you're looking at it, that does appear that that's located in the Jolly Lane right-of-way. Um, one of the stipulations that you'll see in the staff report is that all signage that's located in the right-of-way must be removed prior to issuance of a sign permit. And a sign permit must be obtained prior to any construction of the sign. Uh, look into the golf course and looking at the clubhouse and some of the various maintenance and utility buildings for the golf course. Across the street from the driveway, uh, as you can see, it's a very isolated area of the city. Uh, there's not a lot of residential development that is immediately impacted by this sign. Uh, the applicant has submitted an operations plan which shows that the sign will dim at nightfall. And the sign is only single-sided, so it will only be facing to the north. Uh, there will not be any signage facing to the south for this golf course. Uh, based on the, and again, one more view of the signs um, in the right of way today. Uh, based on the, the limited size and the single-sided uh, design of the, the uh, 
the proposed LED sign as well as the fact that no new structures are being requested or required as part of the construction of this. Uh, it should have a minimal impact on the neighborhood and the staff <coughs> recommends that this application be approved with the stipulations noted in the staff report. I believe we have some representatives here or some uh, people here to the, with us to, uh, that have requested to speak um, and we're available for your questions at this time. Move to approve with stipulations. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve with stipulations. All those in favor, please say aye. Well, well. Oh, we have a speaker request from Dennis. Would you like to speak? Dennis? My name is Dennis Hedick, uh, representing Conrad Signs and uh, Elks Club. Uh, what was the question? Does somebody have a question for me? No, we just wanted to know if you had anything you wanted to add. Oh, no, I just appreciate you approving it. Karen? Karen has a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I don't have a question for you, Dennis. Thank you for bringing, coming forward, but I don't have a question for you. Um, my comment, I, I guess, initially I looked at this and thought, I, I'm not sure I want an LED sign in that area going into a residential area, because it does serve, really, that road serves all the people from the, from the Elks estates. So my question really was, has anybody from the communities out there said anything or uh, you sent out notices, so have, have you heard from anybody out there? Uh, since the staff report was finalized, we have received one phone call uh, inquiring about what the application was. Uh, once they found that it was a sign for the country club, uh, they expressed support for the request. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe the sign will get more people from the uh, estates to start using the, this facility, and that's, that's a good thing. So. Uh, I will support the motion this time. Okay, we'll vote on item number 15 PD 023. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. <coughs> item number 12. Item number 12 is a major amendment to a plan development for Abby's Feed and Seed. Uh, in particular, the applic or going through some history on this, previously we did an initial plan development and granted some exceptions such as reducing the setback to the uh, existing structures from 25 feet to zero feet where they abut uh, streets. Uh, we did a final plan development at that time. We, uh, Planning Commission approved the uh, use of a stability grid material rather than paving the uh, courtyard area. Uh, those plans have gone away, but uh, what the applicant's requesting is to expand the use on the property in the existing buildings from storage to, and I will, uh, to some uh, offices, a museum, and, uh, sorry, one second, and manufacturing space. Uh, properties located on the corner of Nico Street and Fifth Street, just outside our doors here. Uh, aerial view of the property, it's existing, uh, development, uh, most of it's contributing historical other than I believe this uh, corner here Uh, future land use plan shows it as downtown and, we, and uh, here's a major street plan showing arterial streets Omaha 5th Street Main Street st. Joe uh, currently it's zone general commercial district with a plan development uh, the central business district as you can see is located property to the south and southwest this is just on the edge of the uh, central business district uh, here we have the proposed uses. Uh, previously, we'd approved uh, evening theater in this area and retail and storage on the north side. Now we're expanding uh, 
on the south side, the museum, offices, and manufacturing, and with this area remaining as uh, cold storage. Uh, the applicant is requesting two exceptions with this uh, major amendment, a reduction in parking from 58 parking spaces to 30, and uh, an exception to waive the landscaping requirement. Uh, as far as the parking goes, I believe they're not proposing to use the Stabila grid anymore. They're going to pave it. And uh, one issue identified in the, or in the staff report is that uh, stormwater quality and, uh, still needs to be addressed with, uh, upon the middle of a building permit. Uh, this is an adaptive reuse of an existing historic building uh, located right around our downtown. Uh, it's good for the regrowth and reinvestment in the downtown. Uh, one of the uh, issues in the comprehensive plan is removing barriers to uh, development and regrowth and uh, reducing the parking, waiving the landscaping. Those are the type of barriers where you have this existing historic structure and someone trying to come in and, and get some use, uh, contributing use to the regrowth and reinvestment in the downtown. Uh, applicant made the case that even with landscaping on the interior, I believe it was proposed, the sum was proposed there and in this area, by removing the landscaping, we can fit a lot more or a couple more parking spaces in and uh, it's not, you can't really see it from the street, Fifth Street as it were, and uh, the applicant is going to be using some planter boxes uh, just for the aesthetics of the site. A picture of the existing property looking to the uh, south and east, uh, down south on Fifth Street, north on Fifth Street, uh, down Nico Street to the east. Sign is posted on the property. Uh, train tracks and the uh, parking garage located across the street. Uh, this is looking into the interior of the site and the area that's going to be, uh, the use is going to be expanded to include museum offices and manufacturing. Uh, staff is in support of the exception requests and is recommending that the major amendment to the plan development be approved with stipulations noted in the staff report. Are there any questions for staff at this time? Say move to approve this with uh, stipulations. Right. Motion's been made by Steve and seconded by Eric to approve. Any questions? Okay. Dennis? I believe when this came up before, <clears throat> we made some exceptions to the parking, and I definitely agree with what Karen said earlier. We do need to see that this area is developed into some practical use. I'm very concerned though because we've expanded now the usage of this building uh, even into manufacturing <coughs> and so the number of uh, parking spots I think is uh, still a major question in my mind. I don't know how to resolve that um, outside of the limited use of what the buildings can be um, planned use for the buildings. So um, for staff how do you see the parking issues? Madam Chair. Yes, Vicki. So again, noting that, so it's a challenge for a community to determine what is a reasonable reuse of an existing structure and then put on top of it, this is a very historic structure. And what we find is that when you, you, you look at a property like Abby's Feed and Seed, this really is uh, self-monitoring. If you were to drive into that area and there is no parking, you're just not going to stop. There is some street parking and of course there's parking in the parking structure that is open to the public at different times of day. <coughs> One of the things that they brought forward to us in our consideration is an operational plan for a lot of their uh, community activities. They will take place after five o'clock. Our parking lot is open and many of the parking spaces in the structure are then open to the public as well. And we love to see these existing parking lots get reused throughout the day and the evening hours. 
I'd also like to note that long term, this is identified on our future land use plan as being part of the downtown uh, district. And, and when that happens, when, when Patsy and, and you folks join that downtown group and you look at what should all of that entail as a part of that district identification, you're going to see this property brought into that reduced parking calculation. It's one of those that, that uh, is going to benefit from that designation and will in the future be deemed more similar to what we do a central business district where street parking and what parking they can provide on site for the most part dictates the success of the businesses that are there. So we do see this somewhat self-monitoring and with their operational plan, it did allow us to support it. Well, Vicki, <clears throat> bringing it downtown has one uh, configuration in my mind, but when you add manufacturing to this, it just changes my concept of the downtown area. And so I'd like a little more information on what manufacturing is uh, being Certainly. proposed. Certainly. Yeah, hi, uh, Walt Albasi. Um, yeah, the manufacturing, when you go into the, to the, um, the matrix for uh, parking, use square footage, uh, sometimes you're putting a square peg in a round hole. The manufacturing is specific. Uh, the, the tenant that's coming in there, um, <clears throat> uh, David Strong and his wife, uh, they're going to they're bring in, um, they're going to have a sort of a membership type uh, system where uh, artists, people that are craftsmen, so it's really, it's more of a, it, we're not, they're, it's artwork is what it is. Picture frames, woodworking, metalworking, on an individual basis, so uh, <clears throat> somebody that <clears throat> maybe doesn't have space to, um, you know, uh, do some woodworking, they're going to, uh, you know, create art pieces, but utilizing some, just some basic power tools and a little space. So uh, the, the individuals would have a, <clears throat> like a monthly membership, and they'd have access on a periodic basis to go in there and you know, use the tools, use the space. So it's, it, it, but there isn't a designation in that matrix for artist workspace or craftsmen, you know, uh, nothing's on there. So manufacturing was the, was the use that fit the closest to what will be done where somebody's in there and they're, they're taking wood products or metal products or tile and they're turning it into a piece of art. So. You know, that's, that's where the, the logic for using the manufacturing use came. Likewise, the museum, there's nothing on there for art gallery. So the closest thing to an art gallery <clears throat> on the parking square footage matrix where you determine how many spaces would be required per the usage, you're limited to the choices that, that are in the code. So manufacturing is a little bit of a misnomer there. It's, it's, it's artist workspace. And likewise, on the, the museum use is, is uh, a, a uh, art gallery by appointment only. So, you know, you come in to look at some art pieces that are hanging on the wall. It's very similar to a museum. So that's why those two uses uh, are in there. Regarding the parking, again, we've been uh, bringing this space along uh, now for probably since 2008. And, uh, Working, uh, we tried to create some synergy in there with the tenants. Uh, we've got dance studio in there, in there that she's seasonal, then and she has blocks of time where there's a lot of, of folks in and out, and then boom, they're gone. Likewise, the retail space, primarily during the day, there's not a lot of, of uh, pressure on the parking in there, and anything that goes on in the evening, then uh, we can go straight across the street. So uh, I think that. The idea that there's going to be manufacturing in the sense of uh, product production, plant and equipment, uh, cranking out, you know, 10,000 widgets, that's, that's not what it is. We were just trying to find a use that fit what was actually going to happen in there. So that's where, that's where that came from. Um, we have not experienced a lot of um, pressure on the parking in there, even with the tenants, uh, the existing tenants. The ones coming in on the new usage are really going to bring very little parking pressure, uh, additional parking pressure. Most of it's already there with the retail and the dance studio 
and the um, at-home design. So, you know, the additional pressure that's coming in is, is, is minimal, really. It's mostly going to be foot, it's mostly foot traffic, and we've got some appointment-only stuff and artists that will come and go, uh, you know, throughout the day and the evening. So it's, it's not a lot. We don't anticipate a lot of pressure. Uh, as landlords, we've got to deal with that. You know, the tenants will, will really scream if they don't feel like they've got adequate parking for themselves or their customers, and everybody's pretty happy. So, and again, we'll be moving into the central business district, so it becomes irrelevant at some point fairly soon, uh, but we're prepared to move forward with this project now, so uh, staff worked with us, and I like the th staff worked real hard with us on this, because this is not an easy, uh, not an easy uh, fit to get this, this old property uh, repurposed, and uh, it's, so I want to just thank the staff anyway for their help. Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Dennis, that really was a good comment that you made, and, and thank you for that. Typically when we think of manufacturing, we think of truck deliveries and truck movements and whatnot, and certainly from what the owner clarified this morning, we see that, that, that that's not going to be the issue into that tight space. So um, based on the fact that the ordinance does allow them to call it manufacturing based on the work that's done, and the reason they did is because it's a significantly less parking calculation than it would be for retail or art gallery or museum. And so again, uh, that's why it's called out and Fletcher noted it in his presentation. But we did ensure that the, there would not be any concern with truck movements or other deliveries that would further hamper parking. Dennis? Vicki, <clears throat> you just indicated to me though that if it was an art gallery, if it was a museum, if it was classified as to how he was describing this rather than manufacturing, that it would actually require more parking spots rather than fewer. And that's exactly what the intent is of, as I understand from the verbal description, the intent of the usage of this building. So I'll, I'm concerned about parking. Andy. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I, I think my question, and Vic, you may have answered it, um, how far away are we from the central business district? Because what I, I think across the street is where that starts, which the parking requirement becomes zero. Mm -hmm. And no matter what happens with this property, I think we're trying to reuse, I don't know if it's historical or not, but we're trying to reuse a, an older piece of property and, and turn something into something better with the limitation with parking. But if you look at the building next door to at the furniture mart, I believe that is, they don't have any parking either. And if you were to wipe out Abby's feed and seed and build a, a newer, bigger building, you would still have a parking problem. I guess my point is, is that regardless of the use of the space and its adjacent location to the downtown business district, I feel like there's always going to be an issue there. And so you have to find a way to work within the system. And, you know, Technically, in my opinion, it, it should be part of the central business district or fall within the parking plan due to its proximity to the parking garage and the rest of the downtown business district. So I think uh, we're doing the best we can to try to try to make it all fit, but it'll always be an issue. Steve? Well, I kind of tag into what Andy said there. I, I really don't have a, a problem with the parking. It's directly across the street from a parking garage that we built to help actually the city, this building, have enough parking and it is downtown and so if it again if as he said if you start from right across the street here where the square is there's absolutely no parking for the square except for the same parking ramp across here and then go all the way down until you hit the next road there's no parking requirement and so I'm looking at this and I just want to basically thank them because that building has sat there deteriorating for years and years and years and years and they're coming out there and they're actually putting some money into it and they're reviving it and I think it's going to help the ambience of downtown because it's right across from the square. So again, it gives people more, more to do when they're down here. And the parking issue that Andy said is always going to be a parking issue, but it's going to go away because it's going to be part of the downtown anyway. And it should be. It's directly across the street from a parking ramp. And they're actually bringing 30 parking spaces, which nobody else down here has. So in effect, they're helping. They're creating some parking. So I'm going to go ahead and support this, and I want to thank them for all the work they've done in helping um, create the downtown a vibrant place. Thank you. Eric? 
I, I too am supportive of these exceptions. Uh, as, as it comes to the parking, I think that um, what Mr. <coughs> Sorry, I'm blanking, but Walter, what he said about uh, needing to take care of tenants and, and tenants needing to take care of customers, that's, that's the balance when you work in a congested area, when you own property in a congested area. You have to, you have to manage that yourself, in effect. What we say regulation-wise is, is immaterial to what gets used. If nobody comes to a store, it's going to close, you know, and, and what, what the owner here is doing is investing a lot of money based on their belief that they have this figured out and I, I support that. If, if this were a green field on the edge of town it would be a different story if, but uh, this is a developed area that needs reinvestment and the same thing on landscaping. I think we're much better off to have buildings that are um, that are invested and cared for um, that don't fall apart versus, you know, I, that's going to do a lot more than, than having trees downtown, unfortunately. There's just not the space for them. And I'd rather see nice buildings on the streetscape than get caught up on how many landscaping points we need. So I, I, both of these, I think, uh, as we address trying to redevelop areas of our town that have fallen into disrepair, I think part of that is encouraging through granting some of these exceptions. Thank you. Karen. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I also support this, this action today. Um, I know when the historic preservation folks came out and we toured that area, trying to figure out what we can use that property for and how it can be readapted it's difficult and, and it's, a, it's not an easy place to reuse. And so putting artists in there and, and things like the manufacturing of jewelry, those kinds of things that all fit together, seems like the best, best place to do that. Um, and so I, I am supportive of that and, and I think if somebody's going to go to a gallery and, and we've got artists out there, I think they're gonna want it to be attractive. So they'll do the best that they can to you have potted plants or whatever to, to try to uh, attract people to come into that building. Um, my question, I do have one question. My question is, I can't remember the retail space that's right on Fifth Street, if that's paved. I, I was there the other day and I seems like I, it was still gravel right through there. Do you know, Fletcher? The front of that retail space in front of the, on the left-hand side. Let me see if I got a, I believe it is. It's cement pad in the front. And then we're in the process of paving the back, I think, when the plan started. But there's a concrete pad in the front on the fifth street. It, it is all paved? Okay. Uh, that was my question. When they pave it, I just want to make sure that not just the interior is paved, but that front piece was paved too. It just seemed it was odd when I parked there. Maybe there's no striping yeah, or something. Yeah, it opened up to put infrastructure in it and then uh, it pulled it up with patch of the concrete. I believe on this picture you can see the gravel starts in the right back and, and towards the front it's, it is concrete. Okay, thank you. That's, that's my question. John. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I too, uh, pleased to see some repurposing going on on this property. Uh, and my comments was simply that uh, the paving of that area is um, a great ticket to punch for the uh, the parking um, it's been a it's been a gravel space uh, for many years and I and I think that the other thing about the repurposing and upgrading in that is I believe there are safety hazards connected with the uh, property this old that uh, uh, it's just hard to use and I think the upgrading is going to make uh, uh, it's going to uh, make those issues uh, certainly reduce them maybe make some of them go away and I guess in what Andy said was, I don't understand why they, we just don't make it part of the central business district. I don't know how you carve out a corner uh, and say this piece of property is not, although I see in the report that handling grain might have not been the same thing as selling furniture right next door. Um, 
So uh, I'm going to be in support of the motion. And uh, matter of fact, I think I ought to call the question. Okay. I would like to make a comment. I'm highly in support of this, too. I think it's an improvement to the downtown area. And I appreciate people putting in the effort to bring this forward. So I thank you for that. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. <coughs> Number, item number 13. Thank you. Item number 13 is 15 PD 026, a final plan development to allow an urgent care facility to be located on the property. Uh, let me take you through some slides. Location of the property is at the intersection of Elkville, and Holm, Elkville Road and Homestead Street, the northeastern section of the city. Um, the applicant has submitted a preliminary subdivision plan to allow creation of a total of four lots in the future. This would be on uh, proposed lot one. Uh, the, the, at this time, um, development engineering plans have not been submitted for that. You should know a stipulation of approval would be that prior to uh, issuance of a certificate of occupancy, a final plat would need to be approved for the property. Aerial view, there's no structural development on the property today. A future land use map shows the area as urban neighborhood and in the uh, on a gateway corridor of the city uh, employment campus located to the west major street plan shows elkville road as a, a primary arteria or principal arterial and uh, homestead street as a collector zoning of the property general commercial district uh, there's general commercial district and um, uh, to the north and west or to the east uh, much of it is located within plan developments um, this property itself is located in a designation uh, requiring that this uh, final plan development be brought forward. Uh, site plan showing uh, the overall development of the site. Um, for these purposes, we're going to be most concerned with uh, this proposed block one here. Um, the urgent care facility is right here. Uh, they do have proposed expansions in this. Uh, the review of that expansion is not a part, uh, or an, an approval of that expansion is not a part of this plan development today. Uh, any future uh, expansions would require major members of the plan development. Uh, the applicant is proposing one uh, 60 square foot double sided LED uh, sign. Uh, you can see here uh, their sign, um, it's actually this one down below the primary sign. Uh, the, the proposed sign would be otherwise permitted in the general commercial district, although due to the fact that this property is in a plan development designation um, and uh, planning commissions request that you review all LED signage, uh, that's why you're being brought this today. Um, view of the property, sign posted on the property. Uh, a look at Homestead Street looking to the west. Uh, the intersection of Homestead and Timmins. Uh, this is where the primary access to the development would be at, including this urgent care facility. Uh, look at Homestead Street facing to the east. The intersection of Homestead and Elkville Road. Uh, looking across the street, across Homestead to the other commercial development that's developing in the area. As you can see, there is an additional or there is another LED sign that's at Black Hills Federal Credit Union located uh, to the north of this property. Uh, look along Elkville Road. This is the location of that proposed sign. It would be along Elkville Road facing north-south. And one more look across the property to where the uh, facility would actually be located at. No exceptions are being requested as a part of this plan development. Uh, as I said previously, um, due to its location and designation, as well as a, a request for an LED sign. This has been brought to your attention today. Staff is recommending that the application be approved with the stipulations noted in the staff report, and we are available for questions at this time. Andy, do you have a question? Madam Chair, I'll be abstaining from this item. John? <clears throat> Madam Chair, I'll be abstaining from this item. <laughs> you have John Scott. Motion's been made by Steve and seconded by Eric for approval. Yep. Karen? 
Excuse me, I just wanted to make a comment about the LED sign because usually I make a comment about LED signs. But I, I think in this case, if it's going to be an urgent care and it's on a major thoroughfare like that, I, I think that that's probably appropriate. So if somebody's traveling down that road and needs care, they at least can spot it. And so I'm supportive of the, the motion and, and I will be approving. Madam Chair, I'm not abstaining from this item. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Any discussion items? None, Madam Chair. Any staff items? No. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Steve made the motion to adjourn and Jan seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion. Meeting adjourned.